Welcome back and I've got a really unusual demonstration for you today. What we're going to do is we're going to be looking at this really very unusual shaped item called a gombok. So what is a gombok I hear you say? Well, it's a most unusual object that when you put it on a surface, it wiggles around for a while and then really strangely self writes itself. It always lands on the same side. And uh, that might seem obvious, but when I show you a few more examples, you'll see that it's not as obvious as you think. And in fact, it's very, very rare that this happens. So what I'm going to do now is I'll um, do a close-up video so you can see what this object does. So you'll notice in this close-up shot that uh, when you let go of the gombok, it sort of shakes around for a while. And then, if you wait, it sort of teeters on the brink and then, just as you think it's going to stop, it rights itself and always tips onto the same side. So, what a strange object this is, always self-writing itself. So that's going to take a bit of explaining. And what I'm going to try and do is explain what's going on here and give you a little bit of background on how this unusual three-dimensional shape was discovered. So, what a strange object this is, and it's really unusual. So, it always self-writes itself. It always behaves as if it's only got one side that it wants to end up resting upon. Now, you might think, well, that's not unusual. Um, you might have seen children's toys that you can sort of push over and they have a weight in the bottom and they sort of act in an unstable manner and then straighten out and always fall on the same side. But they've got a weight in them. They're not a constant density. They've got a hole or a cavity above the weight. This object is homogeneous. It's solid all the way through, and it's the same density all the way through. So why does it have this weird property that never mind how you put it down, if you wait for a while, it will only ever roll onto one side? That really is going to take some explaining. So let's have a look at this now in more detail. So to understand this a bit further, you need to understand a bit about points of equilibrium. We'll just move the gombok for a second. If you take any object, and uh, again, I've got something that's a constant density and homogeneous, okay, it has three dimensions, and one of the properties uh, of three-dimensional objects is they have points of stability, and some of them are unstable and some of them are stable. So if I put this down, that's one stable point of equilibrium. That's another one. That's another one. That's another one. So it's certainly got more than one. It's also got unstable points of equilibrium because I could put it on its edge there and get it to just about balance. I could put it on its tip, and if I was lucky, I might be able to just to get it to balance. Okay. Think about a cone. You might think, well, this solves the problem. But a cone is stable there and is stable there and has an unstable equilibrium here. So none of these objects, which are homogeneous or three-dimensional, have only one stable point of equilibrium. And that is what is so strange about the gombok. Because never mind how you put it down, it ends up on this one stable side, one point of stable equilibrium. And uh, that's really unusual. So I'm going to look at that in a little bit more detail. So back in 1995, a scientist called Vladimir Arnold suggested there might exist an object that had one stable point of equilibrium and one, and only one, unstable point of equilibrium. And this is 
totally odd for a three-dimensional object. I've shown you these have at least two stable points of equilibrium, and um, this one has at least two unstable points of equilibrium. Um, so this was an object that was mono-stable and mono-unstable. It was mono-mono-static, a most unusual idea and concept for a three-dimensional object that's homogeneous, that's made of the same material all the way through. So the hunt was on to see if this really weird object existed. So in the early 2000s, two scientists from Hungary called Domokos and Varkonyi took on the challenge to try and find one of these really unusual objects. And they'd noticed that in nature, some animals used to tip onto their back. And if they tip onto their backs and get cast or get stuck, then they're in big trouble because they, they can flail around and they'll really struggle to get back onto their front again, back onto their legs. And they'd noticed that tortoises, some of them had a very curved and sort of knobbly shell. And they'd noticed that when they rolled over with a little bit of wiggling, they would roll back onto their correct side again. They seem to have this really weird property of being mono monostatic. In other words, when they're on their backs and on the curvature of their knobbly shell, uh, they were in the unstable, the single unstable equilibrium point. And when they shook a little bit, they always rolled over to the other monostatic point, the single point of stability. And that might be something that was developed within evolution um, to make them safer from predators. So off they went to Budapest Zoo, and I believe they did some uh, science there. I'm not quite sure what they asked to do, but I guess they got lots of tortoises. Um, I, I've heard a, a rumour that um, they even sneaked into pet shops, though I don't know if that's true. Turned them onto their backs and saw which ones could self-write, and they would have the property of this rather unusual object. I've read that Domokos was uh, so interested and obsessed by this that he thought that pebbles on a beach would have the same properties. And um, so he went off to Rhodes in Greece with his wife and picked up thousands of pebbles and rocked them about. And not a single one had this property. They always seem to have at least two sides they would fall onto. And uh, later on, it's been uh, pointed out that pebbles uh, change their shape when they're rubbed against each other. And it's not really possible for them to be mono mono static. They will always have at least two stable equilibria. So with a lot of work and mathematics, I guess, um, they realised um, by looking at the tortoises, etc., that this object could exist in nature and uh, the challenge was on to make one. Um, now, the thing with these is that um, the tolerances are very, very, very fine indeed. And uh, there have been some gombox made and they've been machined incredibly accurately. Um, obviously, if they've got a slight surface on them that's a little bit flat, they might land on that surface and not be mono monostatic but actually um, have at least two surfaces that they're stable on. And um, these have become quite famous. They've been uh, manufactured at huge expense and sent to institutions and places all over the world. And uh, our Queen actually owns one. I'm not sure if you can go and see it, but I believe there's one that's in uh, Windsor Castle. And uh, they give numbers. And the one in Windsor Castle um, is called Gombok 1348 because it was uh, one that was manufactured, that many were manufactured, uh, but because that's the date of the uh, signing of the Order of the Garter, uh, which is the, um, the highest knighthood that anyone can get. So there are Gombox out there in various institutions um, that are numbered, and those numbers represent really important dates or really important numbers in science. So there we go, that's the Gombok. Um, I hope you feel you've got a reasonable understanding of this extremely strange object. 
One of the things I hope you'll do is you'll go out and go, I'll find something uh, that is mono, monostatic. There's um, lots of things that have got to have only one stable point of equilibrium and one unstable one. And uh, one of the first objects you'll probably go for will be something like a pencil. OK, so you could theoretically balance it uh, uh, standing upright vertically on the tip of your finger and you found an unstable equilibrium point. But when it falls onto the desk, OK, it can fall on one bit or it can turn or it can turn or it can turn. Um, so, in fact, uh, especially if it's got a uh, flat end on the, uh, the end of it, the, the non-sharp end, that has at least two, if not more, stable equilibrium points. So where did I get my Gombot from? Well, they're incredibly expensive. Um, I'm not sure you can buy them easily. So I'm really grateful um, to the design and technology department here who 3D printed one for me. Now, this isn't to the tolerances of the really uh, expensive ones. Um, so it does get stuck occasionally, but they've done an immensely good job in trying to make uh, a gombot for me and this one really does demonstrate what a really expensive gombot would do really well so I'm very grateful to them. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you've got a bit of a better understanding of a really strange three-dimensional object that's mono mono static. I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.